Now, I don't like working upside down with a hot soldering iron, and these baseboards are already in situ. If your baseboards are able to be moved and you can work on the underside, uh, then of course you don't need to think about the technique. But I've developed a technique that means I can do the soldering without being upside down and I'm not fiddling about too much under the baseboard. I don't even like having to screw in the small screws and screw connectors upside down under a baseboard, though I've done that for some of the other rewiring projects I've done on here. Now this wire is from 1.5 millimeter or 1.5 square millimeter lighting cable and it's a little bit too heavy. So what I'm using is wire from bell wire. Uh, bell wire in this case that's um, tele GPO telephone bell wire. Um, it's, it's twin wire solid copper in the middle, I don't know what size it is. The pre-drilled holes I've drilled from above, I've gone down for the baseboard. Uh, so this is the wire that's already connected at one end, it barely reaches over for you to see. Uh, this is the wire that's already on the reel, and what I do is uh, wrap them wrap these two around the copper, bare copper wire, solid copper wire, and then solder it on. I'm using a, a cheap Maplin temperature controlled soldering iron. It means I can it works at quite a hot temperature and that seems to work quite well. So there we are, this piece of copper wire uh, here has got the black lead from the previous track feed. The other piece of wire is still attached to the reel because that will go to the next track feed. I cut it off the rest of the grey wire and now all I have to do is feed that up from underneath. Well I use the copper wire that's uh, inserted through the track there as a um, guide. I can feel where that is underneath and what I can do, as long as there's enough slack on this wire, is feel where that is. Make sure that when I was drilling the holes from above of course what you have to do is feel under the baseboard first and check that there aren't any wires in the way or point motors or anything else that might be um, damaged by uh, the drilling process. I found the hole and I've jammed it in. I've jammed both wires together. And so what I've got now is the wire coming up through the hole. And you can just see the wire up there now. The next part of the process is with a file to clean up the rail and it's not necessary to clean up the wire because that's been covered in insulation so that we can now tin the rail. Now one thing to avoid getting a dry joint there is that you've got a long length of conducting material here, heat conducting material, that's the rail, and that's going to draw the temperature out of the iron so even though you're going to be melting the solder uh, there's a danger of getting a dry joint because of the um, rail not getting hot enough to, to completely um, whatever it is, alloy to the solder. No problem with the copper wire, that's, that's going to ease it in. So the thing that needs the heat is, is the rail. You are going to melt the sleepers. You're going to feel, uh, sort of detect and smell some melting of the sleepers that are in there. However, if we do it just enough to get good flow of solder along the rail and also just enough to get the wire attached then I don't think it should damage the sleepers too much. I'm now going to tin, I'm going to turn this off while I tin the rail. Right now the rail is tinned and the wire has been bent. The wire that's in the bell wire seems to be much harder than the wire that's in the 
lighting cable or even normal mains cable. I'm not sure why that is. And so it's just a matter of getting the two in close mechanical contact and then applying some solder. Again, I just need to pull it from below. Just a little thing here, don't know if that shows up on the picture. That's a Brillo pad in a jar. I saw this at one of the shows from somebody making models, uh, white metal models soldering them together. It's a useful way, an alternative to the wet sponge for cleaning the tip of the iron, the stainless steel scouring pad. What I now do is look for the next dropper, which is not very far away, somewhere along here. Again, a, a hole has been drilled down. I use this wire to find the hole. I take the black wire that's attached to that dropper there, stretch it underneath, moving it over obstructions, around obstructions, find out where the wire is. When I found out where the wire is, I know how long to cut it and cut it to length. I then strip the end of the wire that's already attached under there and the end of the wire that's on the reel, wrap them both around a copper dropper and that will be form the next part of the bus all working from above the baseboard and as I go along just adding another length and another length and another length remembering to um, use this bit which is attached underneath um, but you're doing all the attaching above the baseboard and pushing the wire up through.